and introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, he weighed in at 60.5 kilograms and trains under Jared Flick and Brenton Mumford out of Byron Muay Thai and CMBT Training Center. Making his amateur debut tonight inside the Eternal Cage, fighting out of Christchurch, New Zealand by way of Gold Coast, Australia, this is Payarike! And introducing his opponent, fighting out of the red corner. He weighed in at 60.8 kilograms and chains under Joel Sabasvari and Ty Duncan out of Combat Lab. His amateur record stands at three wins, three losses. Fighting out of Sunshine Coast, Australia. Make some noise for Jake Faisal! And when our action begins, our referee in charge, Peter Hickmon. Quiet there, please. First assignment for the bull, Peter Hickmon, inside the eternal cage tonight. Right, Pai, you good? Jake, you good? So it. Pai Cook in the blue, Jake Pitfield in the red. Center cage for both men as it stands. MCT cage side with Chong Ali. Yeah, and these bantamweights always come out fast. If you blink, you're going to miss something guaranteed. Look, every exchange um, that we see, there's probably a few things that we've missed as well. So we've really got to pay attention to uh, the way these boys are setting up, the angles that they're throwing at as well. Well, it's a case of experience versus youth, isn't it? Six fights for Jake Pitfield at 30 years of age on debut for the young 24-year-old, but he seems very composed. There's a big Kick to the liver lands for Jack Pitfield and mixing up his strikes with the grappling. Half body lock for Pitfield up against the cage. He has Cook. And you can see the experience play out out there just in that sequence alone. Um, Pitfield setting him up with some a, a dynamic range of kicks and then straightening up and then leaning away as oh and he's got an arm in. It looks like he's attempting an arm in guillotine here. Out, Cook's really framing off with that right hand, trying to create some space, but oh, that, he's done well to get out of that and weather that storm. And now Cook on top inside of Pitfield's guard. Excellent defense from Pyotiki Cook early on in round number one as we approach the halfway mark. A big kia ora katoa to his friends and family back in Aotearoa, New Zealand. No doubt they're watching on with bated eyes. And Pitfield's trying to get some angles with his hips, trying to set up some sort of submission, but Cook's done well to straighten back up and trying to pass those legs now. He's getting hips, heavy hips. Oh, Pitfield looking for a, a, a new hook or he's chasing that foot. But Cook wise to it and clearing the danger. He's done well to strike there and get his hips down. And now looks like Pitfield was looking for a single leg, but Cook's looking to set up a guillotine himself. He's got the neck. I'm not sure how deep it is. That could be a telling sign of how deep it is, Chong. Positional control for Cook. Final 45 seconds of round one. Look at these scrambles. Great scrambling from these BJJ practitioners. Purple belts, both of them. That was a great knee there from, from Cook, I think it was. And now Pitfield trying to impose his will on the, on the cage. It's an interesting point that you bring up, Chong. The experience of both these guys outside of the cage seems to be working out well here. That one landed to the body. Pete Hickmont was watching closely. Those knees. Huge knees, Chong. Oh, my, every time I see those knees, my, I just wince. I just know how, how much it takes it out of your, you know, out of, out of your tank. And then, because those ones you, you benefit from if the fight goes longer. Stop. Well, as the siren sounds on round number one, huge round, rising sun, and become king of the flyweights. Round two. Ooh, Pitfield opening with the with that right high kick again, but I think Cook just landed with the counter left, and uh, and it's back to the wrestling again. With Cook finding himself on top, it. Pitfield's doing well to try and get some knees in to try and create a bit of a frame. Looks like he's closing up and happy to stay in guard at the moment. Both fighters happy to settle into this position and try to feel out what the other one's doing. 
But Pitfield, Pitfield's trying to scramble, trying to improve his position, but it looks like he's attacking that, that like he's, he's constantly switching his hips. He's not happy to, he's not content to just keep his hips straight. And once again, he's, he's, he's going under, he's looking for that heel again. But Cook's doing really well to scramble. I mean, we've seen some great scrambles from these, these pearl belts tonight. Not much for Pitchfield to latch onto in that exchange. Half body lock for Cook up against the cage. What I really like to see is, I love to see when these fighters are using their wrestling and using the submission as a tool to help create a scramble so they can improve their position as opposed to just out and out exploding to try and use their athleticism to uh, improve their position. Couldn't agree with you more, Chong Ali, your fight expert here to provide analysis and technique breakdown across all bouts. Here on our prelims, big right hand lands for Cook. I tell you what, Cook's landing some great right hands, but the timing that Pitfield throws, he, you know, changes his levels to shoot that double. It's 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 almost like he you, he took that right hand and went, okay, I know what I know what that Thanks speed on. feels like now, and I know what the body looks like when he's about to throw that right hand. So he's sort of just downloading all this information, and then he's able to react to it immediately. Um, but now he finds Cook on you know climbing on his back again, trying to get that second hook in. He's got it in now, a little bit high on the back, just trying to roll to the side so he can. Uh, Free up those arms to start working those chokes. It looks like he's got one under the chin there. Pitfield not, not in a great spot here. He looks like he's in, he, he looks composed. He looks calm. He's gone cooked on back to the seat, but that's a good scramble. Great defense by the Canadian as we count down the final seconds of round two. Dominance once again. Take your shots, boy. And this is a really good way to close out the round from Cook. Like showing, showing the wrestling dominant from top. Stop. And then just that ground and pound and just kicking, kicking the man when he's down. Final Finish round. Up. up against Paya Uruki Cook. Showing that he's a class act, class act rather, here on debut. Yeah, both fighters coming out in round three, tremendously focused. None, none of them rattled. None of both of them seem like they uh, have the game plan that need, they need to follow. And there's a good combination there for Pitfield. If I'm not mistaken, Sean, these are two big bantamweights. I was just about to say yes. that. Is that just me? Or? No, they're big. They are huge. But it doesn't look like they're sacrificing anything in speed. Absolutely. Um, yeah. I, uh, <laughs> I thought that was just me. I didn't want to say anything. Pitfield once again establishing himself in himself in that kicking range. I think he's finding a lot of success out there. He's landing some good shots there. That's a good right hand. Another for Pitfield. This Ooh. is what he needs in round three. Yeah, I think Pitfield is doing really well. He's he's having his way when he's fighting from those longer ranges, from those kicking ranges, and those. Oh, and again with that great timing, establishing. Uh, some wrestling there, but I think if Pitfield can work off his back foot a little bit, stay in that long range, though, like the kicking range or the straight punching range, you can see he landed some good right hands there on Cook. What? Warning! Well, it definitely caught his attention as the bull gives a fair warning <laughs> to Cook grabbing the cage. And he can't do it again. Still proving a tough task to take down in the final minute of round three. Oh. And he switches to the outside leg, but a good scramble from Cook, reversing position, looking for his own single. And he gets it. Finish that single, That's what a sequence. Going from having his back on the cage to attacking the single and finishing it, now being on top, working his way into side control. Pitfield again, using that knee shield effectively and getting back to a close guard. I can expect Cook's not gonna wanna hang out here too much longer as he tries to cut that corner to try and get his hip off to the side and attack that one leg so that he can pass over and into half guard or maybe side control if he can. But Pitfield's got both legs up high, looking to attack. And Cook's done a good job there to get his hips down low so that he can establish that side control. 
Counting down the final 20 seconds of round three, you'd have to think that Pairiki Cook has done enough here on the Gold Coast. Jake Pitfield, a very tough customer, had some huge moments in round number three, but it looks like we'll go to the judges who will Stop. determine who's victorious in this one. Put your hands together. Well, ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of action, we go to the judges' scorecards for decision. Our three judges score this fight 29-28, 29-28, and 30-27. For your winner, via unanimous decision, in the blue corner, Parike Cool!